Hello, welcome back my friends, welcome to the Family Cook. Today we're going to make one of my favourite dishes, which is rendang. I have a kilo of beef here, you could use less or more, but I prefer to make a batch, so it's enough for multiple meals. And this Malaysian or Indonesian dish uh, is based on a little bit of spice, so we need some sambal ulek, which is a, a, a local chili paste. But to start, I put some vegetable oil in the pan, and then we're going to heat it up and fry some onions. So let's chop up some onions. Um, so because I'm using a kilo, I've doubled everything from my original recipe, which is for half a kilo. Uh, normally when I make this, I don't just serve rendang with, uh, with rice, right? I mean, um, when I went to Indonesia, I remember that you know, meat comes at a premium. So whenever you eat, you get a little bit of the meat dish and a lot of rice and a lot of vegetables around that. Um, in fact, when you go to Indonesia, there's something um, that the Dutch call, and I thought just the Dutch, but apparently locally as well. It's called a rice, rice tafel, a rice table. And it's basically sort of a local version of tapas. I absolutely love it. Now, when you have, when you go to the Indonesian restaurant and you have this rice table, the rice tafel, um, you, well at least in the West, you get like loads of different dishes from all the different islands and it's, it's absolutely beautiful and it's a very wonderful, tasty, extravagant treat. Um, however, I've had it a few times when I was in Indonesia and then you get like two or three vegetable dishes, one meat dish and rice. So it doesn't have the same extravagance, but it's still absolutely wonderful, of course. Okay, so let's also try the other one. Now, the onion is going to go in because it also helps, it's not just for the flavor, right? And the fact that onions are so incredibly healthy. Um, but the fact that it helps against the, the burning of the spices. So we put the onions in first, and then we fry the spices. It's the same thing when you make a sauce, right? You, you fry some onions before you put in the stock and the wine, for example. And when you chop up the onions, make sure that you don't go into the root too much, because that is what makes you cry. You don't need those last bits, right? Okay, it's a little bit low on oil. Okay, so let the onions fry for a tiny bit. Uh, and then we're going to put the lemongrass in. And just before we put it in, I just going to bruise it a little bit. So let's put the lemongrass in. I'll uh, put the garlic in. I'm just going to cut off the brown bits. We don't need too much, just a little bit of extra flavor. I love garlic. When I make a satay sauce, a peanut sauce, then I also put a few cloves of garlic in a lot. Right. Now, what we have here, it's on the jar it says katumbar, but it's basically it's coriander. And we need quite a bit, so we need two tablespoons coriander. Then we need 
This is, uh, it says Kunjit, but that's basically uh, turmeric. And so we need half of what we put in the, uh, of the coriander. And the last ingredient that we're going to put in now is, it says here Laos, but it's the Galango root. So if you go into Chinatown, you'll find the Galango root. It's sort of a, uh, similar to ginger, but it's a little bit more, it's not as spicy as ginger. So normally you put a piece of root in, but I just have to dry powder for me. And then last but not least is the chili paste, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Just frying those spices a little bit. Then we'll put the meat in. Oh, it smells amazing. So we're ready to put the meat in. Oh, it smells absolutely wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go empty the contents of this raising steak. It's already chopped up into beautiful pieces. And I'm going to stir it around a little bit and then I'll add the creamed coconut. Or if you use coconut milk, that's the moment you can add the coconut milk. Now, because I use creamed coconut, I also need to add some liquids. So I'll add the creamed coconut. It's half a pack, so 100 grams. And then we're going to add half a liter of water. So I do half a liter with 100 grams of creamed coconut. Now if you use coconut milk, I will just use a tin, maybe a tin and a half, it's usually 400 ml. Now, next I'll add some samba ulek. Now this is quite spicy. What I usually do is I'll do one large tablespoon per half kilo. So a kilo of meat, I have two large tablespoons. To be honest, I prefer to add a little bit more, but uh, my wife is less prone to spicy food than I am, so I'm just gonna keep it in the middle. You do want a little bit of spice in there, of course. That's that's so key to the whole random experience. Look at this. Oh man, that's already nice. It needs, it needs a long time to stew, right? Um, and it just gains flavor over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the lid on it in a minute and put it in the oven at 160 degrees and I'm just going to stew it for a couple of hours and then see where we are. Okay? And the thing is, I swear, is when the dish is ready and you put it in the fridge and you try it again the next day or the day after that, it just it just gains in flavor. And if you add something like ayam talor, like um, marinated boiled eggs and some sambal goreng beans and some coconut rice and some oh, crispy some chopped up onions on top or some um, desiccated coconut and it's just all these things bring the dish so together it's not just a red line. but to me it's definitely you know it's definitely the king it's definitely the ruler of all southeast asian dishes as far as i'm concerned okay now 
This is all well incorporated, the cream coconut it has melted and already has a lovely flavor and I'm just going to put the lid on it and put that in the oven for two hours. Okay, the rendang has been in there for two hours. Ooh, this smells nice. All right, let's see. I mean, the beef is fully cooked. Look, it's it's almost falling apart. So that's good. It could be in there for a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put this on a low heat without the lid, so it can thicken a little bit. And I'll leave that for about half an hour, and I'll think the rendering will be done by then. Okay, so it's bubbling away at, at a very mild, very low heat. Um, I also think there's quite a lot of uh, oil film. You, you can leave it, it's not the end of the world, but you can also take it off if you want. I'm not taking it all off, but just a little bit. Okay, we've uh, we've cooked the rendang down a little bit, um, and to be honest, I mean, my kids just tasted it. They thought it was really nice, um, so clearly I haven't made it spicy enough. Um, but I think it's done. Um, tastes amazing. I mean, I could cook it down a little bit more, but I'm just going to leave it to cool down for now. Um, and then I'm going to store it. And you can freeze it from here as well in portions. I've done that before. So enjoy the rendang. Uh, serve it with some uh, with some nice with some rice. Um, okay, this is the um, this is the end of the rendang. Uh, the rendang is done. I'll um, I'll try to add a couple of pictures to show you what kind of dishes I uh, serve with that. Um, listen, you can keep this for four to five days in your fridge. You can freeze it. Um, if, if you can keep it that long, it is just a wonderful, wonderful dish and so tasty. So please try the rendang and I'll see you next time on the Family Cook. Mm -hmm.